Millions of dollars are spent each year on specialty pay for city workers in 16 cities across the county. That's according to a report from the San Diego County Taxpayers Association out today. Chris Kate, CEO of the Taxpayers Association, joins me with details on the cost of those add-ons to taxpayers. Thanks for uh, being here today. Thank you. Tell us, first of all, what kinds of things uh, are qualify as specialty pay? Specialty pays are essentially add-on pays above and beyond the base salary of an employee, and they're given to employees for different things, certifications, uh, obtaining different types of qualifications, so bilingual pay, being a notary, you get a pay, being an EMT, you get a premium pay, things like that. So extra skills sometimes, but mm -hmm. uh, but also extra pay. Right, exactly. And sometimes those things are given to employees for simply just doing their job, working on trees, working on sprinklers, things like that. All right. Now, the city of San Diego was not included in your report, but there were 16 uh, other cities in the county that were. Uh, in the top three, the spenders were Chula Vista with an annual average of more than $1.7 million a year, Oceanside's annual average expenditure is nearly $1.4 million, while Escondido spends about $1.2 million each year on specialty pay. Now, how come these uh, kind of rose to the top? These cities are larger cities. Uh, they have more employees, more unions they have to negotiate with. So what we did was we not only looked at the total cumulative amount paid out over a 12-year period, we also looked at it on a per-household basis to try to equalize it between cities. And in that case, you have National City, who spends about $45 per household a year on specialty pays, and Imperial Beach, smaller cities, only paying about 155 for, uh, right. for households. And, and more importantly, those numbers have been uh, increasing. But I do yes. want to let people know that we contacted the California Public Employee Retirement System, or CalPERS, and nearly all of the city managers for the cities in this report, none agreed to be interviewed. But Stacy Stevenson, Human Resource Director for National City, told us this over the phone. We have some instances where we need individuals to perform a highly specialized skill or have a, a certain type of license and instead of paying everybody in that job classification at a rate of pay that would cover that, we carve out a specialty pay so only those individuals that are performing that specialized skill or have that specialized license get that pay. So it actually is a, in that way a cost control measure. Now, she's calling it a cost control measure because she says only specific people, but you have a different idea as far as like a, maybe a range of salary for people. Right, and what we're saying is that if you're looking at what type of jobs are being offered to employees and what's the requirements of performing the job, that the salary that's given to those employees should incorporate all of these skills. So if I'm required to be a notary or to, I'm required to work on trees as part of my job, I should get be paid that amount, not have these additional add-on pays on top of my salary, which is all pensionable. Well, Let's talk about this. Some of the money that we we were talking about is first the cost of the taxpayer right. doesn't really seem like a whole lot every year, but there is concern over the long-term impact of this. What is that about? Absolutely. One thing when you look at these specialty pays, these are all included in an employee's pension calculation. So when an employee is working, they're, they're obtaining their salary plus especially pays. The final pension payout for their retirement is inclusive of all those things. So what we're concerned about is that as employees garner all these different types of pays above and beyond their regular pay, that leads to pension spiking, which has a long-term effect, a long-term cost to the cities as they're paying these pension costs during their employees' retirement. There are some new state-wide uh, restrictions uh, and some reforms going on about this specialty um, pay. Uh, tell us a little bit about that as far as the calculating right. pension benefits. When the legislature passed pension reform last year, their, their intent was to limit the pension calculation on base regular pay. CalPERS has come back in recent months and said that their theory, their definition of regular pay includes over 80 different types of specialty pay. So we believe that CalPERS is actually flying in the face of what the original intent of the legislature was when, when passing pension reform. And we're looking now to the cities to negotiate out of the contracts with employee groups these specialty pays and have the pensions 
based on the regular pay only. And do you have any other recommendations for the cities that were in this report? One thing when looking at this, it took a year and a half to complete and to compile the data. We believe that cities should be posting all this information online, the types of pays, how much they cost, and as well as on an annual basis, reassessing the need to have these different types of pays and whether or not they should be granted to employees. All right, Chris, Kate, we're out of time. Thank you so much. I want to let viewers know that you can read the entire San Diego Taxpayer Association's report by going to our website, kpbs.org.